Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is the first in a series of tutorials on multi-threading in Java. So in this tutorial we're going to look at starting threads in Java and next time we're going to move on to looking at basic thread synchronization. So I'm here in Eclipse and I'm going to create a new project. Let's create a new Java project and I'll just call this Threads1. And I'll give that a, um, a main class, uh, which I'll put in a package called demo1. So let's call this just app, and I'll put it in the demo1 package. Now, uh, there are two basic ways of starting a thread in Java. And a thread is just kind of like a separate operating system process, which can run concurrently with other threads. And uh, the first way of starting a thread in Java is to extend the thread class. So let's say here class, um, I'll call it runner, um, extends thread. Now the thread class has a method called um, run and I want to override that method and put some code in there. So I'm going to right click here and go to source override implement methods and of course I could also do this by hand and um, the signature is just public void run so I'll, I'll override that and get rid of this unnecessary stuff here now in run I'm going to put some code that I want to run in its own separate thread and um, I'm just gonna put some code in here to simulate doing some useful work so let's have a loop I'll say for int i equals naught i less than 10 and i plus plus and I'll just output here some text with a system out I'll say sys, sys out control space to auto complete and I'll say hello and let's just add on to the, the loop index now to make this a more realistic simulation I'll slow this loop down a bit and I'll put in here I'll put a, I'll use a static method of the thread class called sleep. And um, sleep pauses your program for the specified number of milliseconds. So let's just pause this for 100 milliseconds, which is one tenth of a second. And um, annoyingly, thread.sleep throws an interrupted exception or can do. So I need to just handle that exception here as well to make it work. So to actually use this class and to actually run this code in its own thread, I need to declare an instance of my class down here. I'll just call this runner1 and I'll set that equal to a new runner. And to run this code, I need to type runner1.start, um, so I'm calling the start menu of the thread class. Um, it's important not to call run because if I call run it certainly will run my code but it's going to run it in the main thread of the application if I call start that tells the thread class to go and look for the run method and to run that in its own special thread so that's why I'm calling start here and if I run that now um, I'll see some code and it's just running and it's actually running in its own thread and to prove that um, let's just copy this and I'll have another runner, runner2 and I'll run them both at the same time so if I run this now and you can see we've got here um, interleaved output so let's scroll to the top I've got 001122 and so on so both loops are running concurrently they're running at the same time and that's kind of the whole point of threads that you can run code simultaneously. So that's the first basic method of starting a thread in Java. The second method is to implement runnable and pass it to the constructor of the thread class. So I'll create a new main program here in its own package to demonstrate this. I'll call it app again and I'll put, in a, put it in a package called demo2 and um, I'm going to create a new class up here class, I'll call it runner again 
and I'm going to say that runner implements runnable and runnable is an interface which just has one method in it public void run so let's, um, let's just click this error here and go to add unimplemented methods and now I've got my public void run method there and just as before so this is the last lot of code um, I'm going to put my code that I want to run in the public void run method so I'll just copy that and I'll paste it in to the run method of my class that implements the runnable interface and now to run that I'm going to declare an instance of the thread class I'll call it t1 and I'll set that equal to a new thread and I'll pass an instance of my runner class here to the constructor and the, the quickest way to do that is just to say new runner and to show that I can get code uh, running at the same time I'm going to have two of those let's just copy that and I'll have t2 and now to actually make the code run I need to call t1.start and of course t2.start and if I run that now we're going to see the same thing again down here let's just maximize this editor and run it um, so I've got interleaved output once again and both um, threads of code are running at the same time now sometimes um, you just want to run like one method in its own thread and it seems like a lot of hassle to create a whole separate class and uh, there is just like a quick way that we can do um, either of these um, things really and I'll just demonstrate that here so this isn't a new way of um, running a thread it's just um, a technique using an anonymous class that comes in handy sometimes and let's put this in a package called demo3 and um, get rid of this stuff so to run just a little bit of code you can do something like this I'll say thread uh, t1 let's say equals new thread and um, here in, inside the constructor brackets of the thread class I can say new runnable round brackets just as I was, I was trying to create an instance of a class called runnable which I'm not um, but if I open a bracket here and Eclipse has put in the closing bracket here now I can implement the um, public void run method right here so um, and in there I can put the code that I want to run so let's just copy this code again Control C and paste that in there and of course once again I mustn't forget to call um, thread.start so t1.start and if I run that uh, once again we've got code running in its own thread so um, that's basically it for this tutorial there are um, there is another way of creating threads using executor services if you want your threads to be in a thread pool and um, we're going to look at that in subsequent tutorials but these are two basic methods and this question comes up a lot um, in job interviews and on exams what are the two basic methods of creating a thread in Java and that's the answer extend the thread class or implement runnable and pass it to the constructor of the thread class in the next tutorial we're going to start looking at some basic thread synchronization techniques and we're going to look at the problems that can occur if you have two threads um, simultaneously accessing a, um, a shared um, variable or some shared data and we'll look at what to do about that or at least we'll start to look at it so join me again next time and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com and until next time, happy coding.